Slip drifting is the simple technique of drifting without hopping, but rather using a pocket of air instead, normally given from uneven terrain. In a drift, there are three major components, the hop, the drift, and the mini turbo. However, if you get air and press the drift button, you remove the hop from the equation. This can be useful because certain air pockets are way smaller than a normal jump height, which equates to less wasted time in the air, which equates to going faster. Now some people often blur the line between what a slip drift really is, so let me break it down. The strat of getting a little bit of air which cancels the hop, the tech I described a couple seconds ago, is the primary definition of a slip drift. But some people add a second definition, which is when you drift into another drift, and using the momentum of the first drift, force your character to get less air than you otherwise would have. The thing is, you're still getting a hop by pressing the drift button, it's just not as high. So to avoid confusion, I'll be calling this second definition of a slip drift a chain drift. Just be aware some people call both of these slip drifts, even though the second one really isn't. So how do you do a chain drift? Well, you've probably already performed this a few times unintentionally. When you go from a drift immediately into another drift, very quickly, your character will almost stick to the ground, giving you a hop that is much shorter than a normal hop. It's a little more obvious when chain drifting in the opposite direction, as your character's tires will skid across the floor. Now the timing is probably one of the more frustrating things to get consistent in this game, as the frame data for getting a chain drift requires you to release the drift button and repress in 4 frames which is ludicrously fast, and also fairly precise. To give you an example, here I try to start and stop a stopwatch as quickly as I can. In order to get a chain drift, you would need to get a time of 0.067 seconds, or 67 milliseconds. You have a timer on your computer or phone, right? Go ahead, give it a try, and leave your best results in the comments below. Now some people add a wheelie in between each chain, which I mean it's a little faster, but only by a minuscule amount. And due to the overarching difficulty of timing, or should I say mashing the drift button, unless you claw with a CCP or play nunchuck, you definitely don't need to do this. Before we end, I want to bring up one more technique that is fairly similar to the slip drift. Some people call it a weight drift, I call it a ski drift, and it's what happens when you do a reverse chain drift without the first drift getting a mini turbo. This is helpful for quick realignments before you go into a drift, and you need to move left or right a few pixels. Coincidentally, this technique has a counterpart, which is when you drift into a non-mini turbo drift. This is called the task turbo. This is helpful for realignments after you finish a turn. Keep in mind that chain drifts are one of the harder techniques in this game, so try not to get frustrated when you feel that you're very inconsistent at it. Keep practicing, eventually you'll catch on.